Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Yes, it's my birthday again. Funny, because it was just this time last year that I had one too. And I always look forward to my birthday every year because my birthday always brings the warm sunshine and lovely mornings, sipping tea on the front porch. You know, things that are part of spring here in Calgary. Last year I bought myself a grail pen. This Pelican M800, which lives up to its reputation every time I write with it. I thought about what I might select as this year's birthday fountain pen. I thought another grail pen might be the Mont Blanc 149. It is the iconic grail pen after all. But I'd already celebrated 1 million views on YouTube by splurging on this incredible Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2. See, it's getting easier to say every day. And getting another even more expensive fountain pen just three months later was more than the YouTube kitty would allow. Then I got a price alert from my Amazon add-on Camel 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 that the Sailor 1911 Large I was watching had dipped below my buying price threshold and that sealed the deal. I received the pen in five days and got it for an amazing price. This is my first Sailor fountain pen and I purposely held off getting it for one or two years until I could get this particular model. Find out if it lives up to my expectations or not right now. <laughs> So after receiving a grail pen to celebrate my 1 million views on YouTube uh, back in February, I set my sights on what pen could I get to celebrate my birthday this year. I had contemplated getting a Mont Blanc, or maybe a 149 or a 146. That got a bit expensive. And so what happened was I got an alert from Camel 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 that uh, Sailor 1911 Large had reached my price and I just couldn't pass it up. It was just telling me this is the pen I need to get, especially when it was the last one in stock. So I pulled the trigger and here it is. And let's open it up. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dog. Sorry, I spaced on your name at the party store. Have a good one, Brent. There we go. New Sailor 1911 Large, all wrapped in cellophane. And a white sleeve says Sailor PG-12. Must be the uh, film rating for it. Anybody over the age of 12. Brian, this does not seem appropriate to watch in front of the baby. Not appropriate? You took me to see Magic Mike XXL. Yeah, this one's wet. Uh, this one too. Also wet. Huh. This one's dry, but the back of the seat in front of it is wet. Slide off the white sleeve. And we have a nice blue sailor box. I should mention that this is my first sailor. That's what she said. I've looked at them often over the last two and a half to three years. But the 1911 large is the one I kind of held out for. And there's the pen. Nice sailor box with foil stamp sailor and the pen in cellophane and there we are clip tag in Japanese that off it's very highly polished and there is the sailor 1911 21 karat gold 875 sailor nib and it's marked MF and I'll have to see how that writes plastic feed well that feels very nice it feels very similar to my platinum president let's see what else is in the box open it up and I have pen world readers choice award and some Chinese best writing experience everyday carry and we have a little pamphlet here all in Japanese I have to see it looks like instructions yes sailor Japan I'll have to translate that and I have a couple of black 
Sailor proprietary cartridges and another Sailor brochure in Japanese. Might be warranty information. And then what looks like a catalog. Nope, more instructions here in Japanese. And no converter. Platinum does this as well. Well, I'll have to go out and get myself a converter. So, I shall ink this pen up and put it through its paces. A Sailor 1911 large. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. So, why did I hold off getting a Sailor for two years until now? Well, the first reason is price. Sailor fountain pens are not cheap. Now, Sailor does have models that are less expensive than this one, but they are invariably smaller pens. The only model other than the Sailor King of Pen, which is astronomically expensive, that was in the realm of the possible was this 1911 large for me. The 1911 standard is more affordable, but again, it's smaller than a Platinum 3776, which I find too small for me. So that's why I employed my Camel 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 tool to notify me when, if ever, the price of the 1911 large fell below $300 Canadian. You can see from this Camel 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 chart that if I had waited another month, the price would have fallen to $200 Canadian. But when I got a notice of $280 and it was the last one in stock, I had to pounce. They just mean until they stock it at a lower price the next day. But I'm happy I snagged it for a relatively low price. The Sailor Pen Company was founded by Mr. Kayu Goro Sakata in 1911 in Hiroshima, Japan. The Sailor 1911 is the flagship model and named after the year of the company's founding. The 1911 and the Pro Gear 14 karat gold models seem to be their most popular. The 1911 being the cigar shape and the Pro Gear being the flat top styles. They tend to cost around $180 US. Overall, the 1911 Large is a cigar shaped injection molded plastic pen, which is roughly the same size as my Platinum President. And both the Sailor 1911 Large and the Platinum President are pens inspired by the Mont Blanc 146 in a very socially acceptable way, as they are both expensive, Japanese, and only have two rings instead of three. Let's take a closer look at this pen. From the top, we see a cigar-shaped plastic finial separated from the cap by a gold ring that has two grooves, one top and one bottom, and holds the gold-plated clip in place. The clip is nicely springy and very usable and has a lovely non mont blanc shape to it. The cap tapers up in a nice curve to the two gold cap rings. The top ring is thin and the bottom ring has Sailor Japan founded 1911 engraved into it in a hollow block serif font. The rest of the black cap tapers down to a small step down to the barrel which is straight to about here where it begins to taper slightly to another gold grooved ring which separates the end finial from the barrel. The cap unscrews with about one and three quarter turns to reveal a black tapering plastic section with a small flare towards a number six size 21 karat gold nib and black plastic feed. The section is separated from the barrel by another gold ring. But let's take a closer look at this nib. I believe 21 karat gold is unique to Sailor. And this is a very, very good looking nib. It has some nice scroll work on the border and then 1911 for the year of the founding of the Sailor Pen Company, the Sailor Anchor 21K875, which is the gold content of 87.5% gold, and Sailor in script at the bottom. On the left shoulder of the nib, there's an M and an F, which stand for a medium fine. The nib and the feed are friction fit in the section, and can be pulled. But I'd advise against that as it's very tight. Also, Sailor does not sell their nibs separately. So swapping nibs mean you have to buy an entire pen anyway. The section unscrews 
to reveal the metal nozzle of the section and the sailor converter that I purchased separately because it does not come with the pen. The $10 converter is good quality with a wide mouth and can be disassembled easily for maintenance. I think this converter probably cost sailor less than a dollar to make. So including it with a $300 plus pen isn't too much to ask, I don't think. And of course, the pen takes sailor proprietary cartridges. The top of the metal nozzle has a small o-ring right there that you can feel engage with the barrel on that last turn and keeps the section from unscrewing. The inside of the cap shows a black plastic cap liner to keep the nib from drying out. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen extremely well balanced in the hand. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably, but posted, this pen is just sublime and its weight and balance really feel wonderful in the hand. I bought this pen on Amazon for $280 Canadian, which I thought was a tremendous bargain, even though two weeks later the price of the pen bottomed out at $200 Canadian. The 1911 series is Sailor's cigar shaped pen model, and they are available in three sizes, which they call Standard, Large, and King of Pens. Translated, that is small, medium, and large, but not huge. If you take the 1911 model and flatten the top and bottom finials and add a Sailor anchor crest to the top finial, you have the Sailor Pro Gear, which also comes in the same three sizes, small, medium, and large. The small sizes, or what they call standard, uh, come with 14 karat gold nibs, and the large and king of pen sizes both come with 21 karat gold nibs, although the king of pen size has a larger nib. Each of the 21 karat and 14 karat gold nibs come in the same seven widths, extra fine, fine, medium fine, medium, broad, zoom, and music. The Sailor Music nib is a two-tined nib rather than the three tines of the Platinum Music nib and is more like a stub. The Sailor also has its celebrated Naginata Togi nib, which has characteristics that allow you to get line variation based on the elevation angle of the pen to the page, which is similar to the zoom nib, and also variation between horizontal lines and vertical lines, similar to an architect grind. Currently, I can only find the Naginata Togi available in the 1911 Large and 1911 King of Pens models. Each of these series of pens, the Pro Gear and the 1911, are available in several colors, and Sailor tends to have limited editions and special colors in the standard sizes. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Sailor 1911 Large with a Platinum President, a Wingsung 628, a Wingsung 629, and a Pilot Falcon. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Platinum President has an 18 karat gold nib, and both the Wingsung 628 and 629 have 14 karat gold nibs, as does the Pilot Falcon. And the Wingsung 629 is a piston filler, whereas all the others are cartridge converters. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Now let's look at some measurements, then I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is a special paper day. Yes, I know. Oh my God, Doug, what happened to Ms. Fontaine? Well, my pen friend Janice showed up at my door with a birthday card and these super thin sheets of Bachuan paper. It feels very similar to Tomoe River paper. And how generous was that, considering it was her birthday first? Happy birthday, Janice, and thank you so much for this lovely gift. So I'm going to try my birthday pen on this birthday paper. And this is the Sailor. Nineteen eleven large, and it has a twenty one karat gold medium fine nip. 
let's check the wetness. This nib was very, very wet, right out of the box. And it has a very, very smooth feel on the paper with some very unique feedback. I've heard people talk about the Sailor feedback, but it uh, feels like maybe a 2H pencil on uh, vellum. Gives you a lot of control, and it's not too much, not too little. And compared to this Pilot E95S, which is buttery smooth, this Sailor is just as smooth but has that texture to it on the paper very nice so if you like to feel the paper under your smooth nib the sailors feedback is very nicely tuned I'm going to take a moment here to compare this sailor 21 karat gold nib with my platinum 18 karat gold nib the contrast between these two nibs pretty much proves to me that it's the shape that has more to do with its perceived softness and flexibility than the actual composition of the material of the nib. You think that the amount of gold in the nib from the 58.5% gold in 14 karat gold uh, to the 75% gold content of the 18 karat gold nib and the 87.5% gold in the 21 karat gold nib would mean that the nibs get softer and more flexible depending on how much gold there is. It's certainly true that 14 karat gold is a harder alloy than 21 karat gold, but that isn't the determining factor here. I asked this question of my nibmeister, Jack Hernandez, and he confirmed my suspicion that a nib's flexibility is more a question of geometry than of metallurgy. Let's look at these two nibs here. The Sailor 1911 Large with a 21 karat gold nib and the Platinum President with an 18 karat gold nib. Here's a photo of the two nibs end on. The Sailor on the left and the Platinum on the right. Now both nibs have a good amount of gold in them at 87.5 and 75% respectively. But the softness of the gold isn't the factor here. The Sailor on the left is much flatter in cross section than the President, which has a distinct dome shape to it. Now look at this photo showing the longitudinal section of the nibs with the sailor on the top and the platinum on the bottom. Look at the pronounced arch of the president's nib compared to the relatively flat sailor. This is geometry rather than metallurgy or even architectural physics because we know that an arch shape is one of the strongest structures known in architecture. The pointed arch allowed cathedrals to rise into the air for hundreds of feet without collapsing under their own weight. The arch is what allows some very famous bridges to bear weight over spans of hundreds of feet over rivers, like the arched Ponte Vecchio Bridge over the Aro River in Florence, Italy. So the arch on these two nibs affects how the material flexes, or in the case of the very arched Platinum President, not at all. And if you still think it's the gold content, here is the Wingsung 628 14 karat gold nib next to the Platinum President's 18 karat gold nib and the harder 14 karat gold alloy is much bouncier than the platinum president's softer 18 karat gold nib so that arch obviously has a lot more to do with it and what about steel well the same holds true of steel here is the yovo number no. six size steel nib on my opus 88 bella next to the platinum 18 karat gold nib the steel yovo is very springy indeed compared to the same pressure on the platinum. You'd think that the gold nib would be much softer and more flexible, but the opposite is the case. This steel nib is super bouncy compared to the stiff 18 karat gold platinum. Okay, back to the pen at hand. And the ink today is Ferris Wheel Press. Roaring Black, sorry, Roaring Patina, 
black. And I've got to say that I'm in love with this ink. I was hoping that this very juicy nib would show off its sheen and shimmering characteristics. And I'm pleased to say that this new ink from Ferris Wheel Press is just stunning in this pen. It gives a bit of subtle bling to a pen that desperately needs a touch of razzle dazzle. Because, let's face it, the classic black and gold cigar shaped pen is as exciting as a live recitation of Beowulf accompanied by Tuvan throat singing. I abandoned my goal to master Tuvan throat singing. Okay, I know I shouldn't ask, no. but what it is. To And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. And as to line variation, well, this nib is very nice and flexible. It's not a flex nib, so don't push it, but it has some really nice variability just with normal writing pressure you'll get some line variation out of. Very, very nice nib. The line the nib makes is 0 0.4 millimeters which makes it a western extra fine or a japanese fine nib and for our quote And for some reverse writing. It's a little bit more scratchy, but not unpleasant. And it keeps up. Much thinner line, much drier line. And some quick writing. no issues whatsoever this is a very juicy wet pen so what do i like and what do i not like about this fountain pen first let me say a couple of things all of the talk about sailor nibs being remarkable it's true and i'm glad that i waited the two or is it three i guess years to get this particular sailor the name might be sailor 1911 large but this is not a large pen this is a normal size pen Look at it against my two favorite cigar-shaped pens, my Pen BBS 308 and my Leonardo Ferrore Galaxy. The Sailor 1911 Large is the smallest of the three, and I have medium to small-sized hands. So I can see why Brian Goulet prefers the Sailor 1911 King of Pens over the two smaller sizes. The 1911 Large is not even as big as the Platinum President. That being said, it's incredibly comfortable and well-balanced posted and writes like a dream. The 21 karat gold nib is stunning to look at. And yes, you can tell the difference in looks between 21K, 18K, and 14 karat gold. The higher gold content of this nib really makes it stand out it just has an incredible luster to it. And beyond the looks, the way this medium fine line makes ink lines on the paper is just sublime. It is wet and juicy and bouncy and just a total joy to write with. It's so juicy, I've been through a lot of this wonderful Ferris Wheel Press Roaring Patna Black ink. I've had this ink in a couple of other pens so far, and the Sailor is the only one so far that really brings out its incredible sheen and shimmer. This pen will absolutely make my top pens of 2022 list this year, but I do have to comment on a couple of, well, not so much criticisms, but observations. First, come on, sailor. You price the pen at 300 bucks and you can't throw in your $1 converter, which you sell separately for 10 bucks? What's with that? Well, sit on down and tell me what up with that. But I guess Platinum does the same thing. 
And the next thing is that these black and gold pens are pretty underwhelming visually. I get the whole classic look, the understated elegance thing, but Sailor tends to only get adventurous in price ranges that need second mortgages to be able to afford their gorgeous Irushi finishes that will just remain virtual eye candy for this consumer. The Sailor 1911 Standard Pen of the Year for 2022 is in a lovely translucent cranberry with sparkles and is priced about equal with this pen. But where are these options in a medium sized pen? I have the same complaint about my Pelican M800. I love the M800 size as it's just about the perfect size for my hand, but it only comes in blue and green and black. If you want red or, or God forbid the Streisman gray, you have to cough up a lot more dough. And that's why the M600 gets all the new cool finishes with its matching inks each year. It just makes me want to grab the smaller pen and blast it with some gamma radiation. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis and badges. Plus now I'm providing unboxing videos as I get new pens exclusively for members only. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. this.